All right, how's it going, everybody? We're back with some more Black Ops Cold War. I was actually debating not uploading at all today because, as you can see, I don't have uh, gold finished yet for the Tundra. I'm still missing 13 long shots and uh, seven bloodthirsties here. And part of it's because I haven't really had as much time to grind as I wanted to because I spent a lot of time this double XP weekend in zombies trying to level up some other stuff just to take advantage of this whole double XP thing. Like, as you can see right here, I'm trying to level up the Barrett a little bit. I was leveling up the shotguns a little bit, just trying to, like, make some progress on some different things that I know I don't really feel like doing when the double XP is gone, you know what I mean? And then the other part of it is my lobbies have just been so miserable, like, oh my god. I tweeted something about this before, but dude, I swear, if I go on one more four kill streak and then get mapped by an MP5, I think whatever's left of my brain is actually going to explode and just level the tri-state area. Like, Philadelphia, just gone forever. Now, I'm sure most of you didn't click on this video to hear me rant about how sweaty this game is becoming, right? You clicked on it because of the title. I believe I have discovered quite possibly the the cheesiest secondary in all of Black Ops Cold War. And what it is, is it's this thing right here, the Diamati pistol. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I've run around with this. It doesn't seem that good. You may be asking, what makes this so cheesy? Well, you're correct. On its own, this pistol's really nothing special. The burst is neat, but the damage is kind of low. And on its own, really, it's actually outclassed by the M1911 in terms of like the pistols. However, once you max this thing out and you unlock the dual wheel, all bets are off. This thing is like Renetti levels of pure cheese. Well, not pre-nerf Renettis. Those things were like out of this world ridiculous. Now, this may not be the best way to run this, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm running the infantry compensator for the vertical recoil control. I find that horizontal recoil doesn't do a whole lot to this gun. Then I'm running this task force barrel for the damage, damage range, and bullet velocity. And all that stuff you lose down there, again, recoil really doesn't feel like a big deal with this gun, which is part of why it's so nuts. And then as far as the max starting ammo, that's solved by this magazine right here, the Salvo 30 round fast mag. On a dual wielded pistol, this might be the best attachment for all the secondaries. Because you get all of that, all of those pros up there, and all you lose is ADS time, which doesn't affect dual wielded weapons. It's absolutely crazy. And then we got this 5 milliwatt laser to give us the hip fire accuracy, which once again, only takes away ADS time, which we don't care about. So naturally, statistically speaking, these things are pretty ridiculous. Now, like I said, these are not as good as the Renetti's pre-nerf. I wouldn't recommend running around with them as like a primary weapon, like how you could with those are like the snake shots, for example, on Modern Warfare. But the reason they're so cheesy is that when you swap to them, you swap at the speed of swapping to a pistol. One of the big limitations, in my opinion, of using the shotguns on this game, which, I mean, for all intents and purposes, are probably a better damage choice. Or alternatively, if you run Lawbreaker and you decide to throw, like, an SMG in your pocket or something like that. The downside to that is that swapping to that weapon is very slow unless you decide to burn a perk slot on Gung Ho, which, I mean, between Flak Jacket, Tack Mask, Assassin, Ninja, Ghost, and Cold-Blooded, I really don't see any reason to use that over anything I just listed. So unless you're okay with running a suboptimal perk setup, using a second primary really isn't the best idea. Which is why these things are so cheesy. They've got strength, I would say, comparable to a non-meta fully auto, but you can swap to them with the speed of a pistol, and you don't have to give up any of your perks or your wild card or anything like that. And yes, they absolutely do blow people up. It's absolutely nuts. Also, I lost a level since the last time I logged in and I swear I was level 70 before. I've been experiencing a whole lot of different weird bugs. Like, a lot of times when I spawn into a match, I'll notice, like, the map's not loaded in properly, and, like, I can see people through cover and shit like that. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, I'm really trying for these, uh, five kill streaks and long shots. I'm, I'm still running around with this thermal for it. And truth be told, I think the thermal might actually speed up the snipers a little bit. I don't know if it's, like, the animation of actually going into the scope or whatever, but for whatever reason, whenever I ADS with using the thermal scope, it feels faster than if I'm not using it. I don't know why, because it's not supposed to do that. Anyway, we'll see if I run into any good situations to use these things, so I can kind of show off how good they are. But yeah, so back to something I was kind of talking about a little bit earlier. My lobbies recently have been, uh, ugh, they've not been good. Just been playing against full teams of kids that are either trying out for optic or just, I don't even know what. Get wrecked. Can I hit my shots, please? Thank you. Jesus Christ, why am I so bad? Oh my god, I didn't deserve that kill at all. Dude, if I die... Um, I have died one off the bloodthirsty so many times, you guys have no idea. Like, I'm actually losing my mind. I have lost multiple brain cells in this process, I think. Getting four kills in a row and then just getting absolutely shit on by a kid with Twitch TV and his fucking gamer tag. 
Yeah, like, look at that, dude. Entirely inappropriate amount of range on these things. Not that I'm complaining. I'm glad to have the help. I need it with these snipers. Oh, hang on. We're on a three streak here. No, come on again! I know it said I got a bloodthirsty there, but one of those was with the pistol, so it's not gonna count. But yeah, dude, my win loss has dropped so fucking far. If it's not below a one yet, it's about to get there. And it's not just for me, like, rage quitting lobbies or anything like that. It's literally, I'm just having such a hard time consistently winning games. My biggest problem, actually, though, has been games in progress, which is something that I talked about briefly before, but I actually want to talk about it a bit more here. I have taken an obnoxious number of losses because of the game in progress system, and I hate so first of all, there's a mechanic in place that's supposed to prevent you from getting a loss stat if you um, join a game in progress that you're losing and like, you know, your team goes on to lose the game. You're basically not supposed to be credited with a loss for that game because that's really not fair to you, right? Well, I don't know if that's not working as intended or if the threshold for that is just incredibly strict because I'll join games of domination where my team's down by like a hundred and I'll still take the loss when I finish out the game. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about here, actually. The thing that's really been getting on my nerves is the ability to leave a game in progress. So back in Modern Warfare, and this is something I think they did right. For one thing, if you joined a game in progress, you were typically given a chance to back out of the lobby before the game started, right? Like everybody, you probably remember that video of me like joining nine in a row or something like that. The first issue with these games in progress is that the game no longer allows you to back out of a game from the pregame lobby. If you join a game that's in progress, it'll throw you in immediately without an opportunity for you to leave. Now, not a big deal, right? If I join a game where my team is getting wrecked, theoretically, much like Modern Warfare, I should have the opportunity to back out, right? Well, apparently not so. Even if your team is losing by 150 points, even if your team is one point away from losing the game and you back out, you will be credited with a loss. I really don't know why this is the case. I tweeted at Tony Flame. I mean, I didn't really expect him to answer me, but I tweeted at Tony Flame. I was basically like, hey, is this a bug? Like, if I'm losing a game and I back out, I feel like I shouldn't get a loss, you know what I mean? If I joined in progress, obviously. So yeah, that actually right there has been what's been doing the bulk of the damage to my win-loss ratio. Because, like, I'll join games all the time where, like, not only is my team losing, but, like, the other team will have up, you know, a chopper gunner or a fucking VTOL or something, and it's like, oh, there's a bloodthirsty. But yeah, like, the other team will just have kill streaks up and shit, and it's like, I'm not gonna sit there and just get stomped on, you know? I'm trying to make challenge progress, you know? I'm going for diamond snipers and all that stuff. Oh my god, I can't believe that worked. That was the luckiest tomahawk I have ever hit, except for that one in the intro. But anyway, I don't really think I should be punished for doing that in general, you know what I mean? I don't know, maybe other people feel differently. Maybe it's like, oh, you should stick it out and see if you can, you know, help your team or whatever, but... But for me, it's like, I join these games way more frequently than I feel like I should in general anyway. Like, I definitely feel like the majority of the games I join as a solo player tend to be in progress and losing. Anyway, that was all I really wanted to talk about for this one was the, uh, the whole thing with my win loss. It's just frustrating, because like I kind of said in the last video, or the last multiplayer video anyway, you know, after last year in Modern Warfare, what with me having so much trouble keeping my win-loss up, I really did want to try and make an effort to have a good win-loss this year. And it's just frustrating, because it really feels like the game's going out of its way to not let me do that. I know I haven't really done a great job playing the objective in this game in particular, but, but you know, in general, it is really frustrating to just join game after game that's in progress and my team is losing. Like, it feels like Call of Duty did way back in the day, you know? Although, actually, in a way, it's it's kind of worse because you know back then lobbies didn't split up after each game so if you join a lobby that's in progress and your team's getting wrecked you can just stay in the lobby until the next game and then you're guaranteed a game at the very start right but anyway that's really all i had to talk about for this one six more bloodthirsties nine more long shots i should have this done by tomorrow i hope can't wait to get to the 50 cal oh man that's gonna be awful although on the bright side because that weapon's so bad i'll probably start playing so terribly that maybe skill-based matchmaking will actually give me some decent lobbies but regardless as as always, if you enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more Black Ops Cold War content. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next one.